Uh, please welcome Sam Brown, tomorrow goalkeeper. Everybody now says whenever I bring a GoPro out, oh, it's Ben Foster. Yeah. I was like, technically I was doing it like a year before him, but that's that's fine. It's yeah. like, it's okay, whatever. <laughs> I literally cut the entire game down to every single touch. If it's a goal kick, if it's like a back pass, whatever it is, it, every single touch they have gets clipped up. 95th minute, you know, you've got to go crunch somebody. You might get kicked in the face. They're the best bits. They're the best bits. Well, it was just going to be an average video. Yeah. It just didn't stop. That's crazy. Every day I was just looking back as like an extra mil views. I was like, what is going on? Um, goal, goalie. I don't know what they feed some of these keepers now. I've got a 15 year old who's six foot five. Yeah. I just black out, completely cut out. I've name dropped a little bit. When I, I, I work with EA and that kind of stuff and yeah. work with Ilan Melia. We did a penalty shootout. There's a lot, just a lot of charity games as well, which yeah. is the main thing I'm really focusing on. I've got a good record. So, and out of 14 charity games now, I've won 13. My dream is to one day work for England. That is the ultimate aim for me, either as an England goalkeeper coach or England manager. What a save from Mark Howard. Hey there, I'm Mark Howard, professional goalkeeper and the host of the Yours Mine Away podcast. Today I'm thrilled to share my secret with you. When I got my hands on active collagen, it was an absolute game changer for me. As football players, we all want to train hard, play harder and recover faster. Since rupturing my Achilles six years ago, I've relied on collagen supplements to help me remain injury free. After trying various brands, I found my perfect match with you perform. Mm. Packed with two unique bioactive collagen peptides. It's the UK's number one choice for both prehab and rehab. Say goodbye to injury worries and hello to enhanced performance. Collagen is key for your muscles, your tendons and ligaments. But here's the kicker, as we age, we lose it. Uperform's active collagen doesn't just replenish, it turbocharges your natural collagen production. Simply take one gel a day, it really is that simple. And for the result, feel unbeatable and keep playing your best game on and off the pitch. I wouldn't recommend anything that I don't believe in. You perform is the real deal. And just for you, they're offering an exclusive saving. Click the link in the description below and use code MARK20 at checkout. Join professional footballers all over the world that now take active collagen to make injuries a thing of the past and recover faster. Grab yours now and transform your game. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Thank you all for listening. Uh, please make sure you do like, comment and subscribe. It really does help. I've got uh, a guest here that's nodding and knows all about the social media world, which is kind of funny. Uh, he's got a huge following and an amazing backstory. Uh, his social media presence in the goalkeeping world, especially for his reels, is just incredible. He's got 16 million views on one of them. Just amazing stuff. Uh, please welcome Sam Brown. Tomorrow goalkeeper. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I need to get that like screen recorded. It's yeah, the nicest nice. thing anybody's ever said about me. No, honestly, <laughs> I'm so impressed with uh, how you've gone about what you do. And uh, obviously the GoPro footage really does help. And it's, it's your own kind of stuff now. Uh, and the, the commentary aspect does crack me up a lot of the time. <laughs> Like the goalkeeper has weldy stuff and yeah. yeah. Ironically, I found it upsettingly. Normally, when you say they have a stinker, yeah. it would do so much better. Though. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's what <laughs> everyone wants to see you fail. <laughs> everyone wants to see a goalkeeper fail. That's why I'm here trying to spread a positive message about goalkeepers because you keep putting goalkeeper as stinker. <laughs> doing the Lord's work. That's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to no, make up for me. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm buzzing to have you on. Uh, like I said, your story is something that I didn't know before today, but I've followed you on social media for a long time now and. Obviously, the work that you do uh, in the goalkeeping world, and you are a young, upcoming goalkeeper coach as well as all of that. To, to manage what you do is, is impressive. Uh, no, I say, it's, say being so young sometimes causes some challenges as well because obviously uh, I'm turning around and all of a sudden there's like 38 year old goalkeepers and I'm 26. I'm like, you have to listen to me. And sometimes I don't know, don't, don't go down too well, but yeah. it, it's okay most of the time. Do you find then that, that those goalkeepers don't listen, or do you find that just because you're a goalkeeper coach and like, Obviously, I'm 37, so like, mm. if I think you're going to help me or improve me, it's worth me listening. It's it's some are just understanding. They're really professional about it, happy days. And yeah. then there's been a couple that it's I've almost had to lay down the law and then like show that I actually know knowledge. Yep. That, so they'll make a mistake. And almost for the first three weeks, it sounds really harsh, but I'm basically critiquing them more than everybody else. Yep. So they start thinking... Oh, maybe he does know something. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, you might shame them on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a big fear for them. So a lot of the older boys don't want to be filmed, though. Do they not? No, yeah, like, yeah. No, that's not about me. Yeah. So yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> to be fair, like that is being a goalkeeper. You're open to like being opened up anyway, mm. and social media does expose goalkeepers 100%. a lot. So I suppose some of them don't want that as a distraction anyway. Mm. 
especially as you get older, probably they're more likely to read the comments than a kid that's yeah. just seeing the positive side of it. Mm. So a lot of the, the younger guys I work with, so like say from like the EC Academy and like probably up until about 21, they love it. Yeah. Oh, do we have the GoPro? Do we have this? Do we have this? The second they hit to like 25, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. all of a sudden they're so caught up in their own head about how they're doing and they don't want to be looked bad and all this kind yeah. of stuff. When you're younger, you're a little bit more carefree. You just want to play, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And also social media is a lot they use it a lot more and yeah. they're more aware of everything that goes on and yeah. how it works almost mm. the, the algorithm that is social media they expect hate and they yeah, can just yeah. kind of brush it off because yeah. that's what they're growing up with so yeah but where the older generation i suppose any hate is seen yeah. as personal yeah yeah it's difficult right i'm going to kick this off with a couple of our quick fire questions uh, catch or parry I would love to say catch, but I've got such small hands. I've yeah. got a parry. <laughs> <laughs> makes better clips as well, doesn't it? <laughs> it makes a lot better clips. Uh, tea or coffee? Tea. Play short or kick it long? Kick it long. Yeah, kick it long. <laughs> what about the sidewinders that we were talking about before? <laughs> I do like a side. I prefer a sidey, but I prefer kicking it long from the deck. Obviously, we were talking about this off air, but you know, like you see all the clips now of like, on, especially on other people's, mm. I'm not going to name names, but of them just doing sidewinders 30 yards away mm -hmm. to a, like other players or other goalkeepers. It's just, it's a, it's a skill that you'd never use in a match. No, or like, very, very rarely. Like I, I can only ever remember one goalkeeper that used to distribute like that, and it was uh, Aban Danzieri, uh, the Argentinian oh, okay. goalkeeper. Fair enough. And, and he never threw the ball out. So even his left and right back, you don't, you go on YouTube and watch. Okay, it. Was he was always incredible. He nearly, really? he nearly signed for Arsenal at one point. He, his distribution was that good. And this was, uh, I think this was before Jens Lehmann. It oh, was, really? I okay. think he did a medical. I think Jens did a. I think there was Paul Robinson did a medical. I think there was loads of keepers at that time. And it was Abandan Zieri. I remember him just because his distribution for Argentina. He played like 60 times for Argentina. Oh God. He used to sidewind the ball to his fullback. And I'd never <laughs> seen a goalkeeper do it in a match before. Oh, that's, that's content ideas now. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, you need to watch some clips. It was incredible. Uh, right. Uh, Favourite ever goalkeeper? See, this is a really, uh, this is kind of an annoying one for me now because I kind of seem like a hipster and I'm just jumping on the bang wagon. But um, my family's originally from Birmingham, from my dad's side. Yeah. Um, and just as I was really getting into goalkeeping, um, a certain Ben Foster was at Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to always say, who's your favourite goalkeeper? I was like, uh, Ben Foster, Paul Robinson. Yeah. And people were like, oh, okay, bit weird. Now, obviously, everybody follows Ben. So they're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> they're like, oh yeah. you're just following Trent. No, 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 no. But yeah, Ben Ben Foster, Paul he, Robinson. He had a couple of unbelievable years for Birmingham mm. as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, why Paul Robinson then? Uh so my uncle is a Tottenham fan. Yep. Um, also my dad and my granddad are Birmingham fans. Yep. So just the two keepers that just I saw, in, yeah. saw most. <laughs> right. uh, who do you think is the best goalkeeper in the world right now? I think it's Allison. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, so it's, it's getting yeah. repetitive all the time. But yeah. yeah I think obviously it is. everyone goes down and like the Allison. Obviously you've got Courtois. Mm. You've got uh, Testegen. You've mm. got Neuer still unbelievable oh, goalie yeah. and Edison. But yeah, I think El Allison has all of. The all of their attributes it's insane Every, even if let's say edison's got 10 out of 10 distro allison has yeah. got nine yeah but he's got nine and nine and nine but his 1v1 saves his 1v1 yeah. do you see how he drops both of his knees and just like bear hugs yeah, him? It's does, insane. Yeah. Oh, he's insane and he's so big he's he's imposing mm. i think that's one of the biggest things is you go back to like the shamichaels of the world and yeah. oliver khan's and you see that in an allison mm. you see like it's scary to actually go mm. through one on one against him yeah. i suppose that's why he, he does so well at them because he's got a bit of an edge yeah it's it's a little bit more like with the whole bear hug thing. I call it a bear hug, but it's almost throwing back a little bit to older school keeping because a lot school, of the time yeah, now they kind of just stand up and wait yeah. for a save where yeah. he still goes for it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, maybe it's a bit of a throwback as well. Like, Definitely. <laughs> uh, movie or a box set? Ooh, uh, probably movie. Well, nice. Yeah. Uh, right. And then final one. I always ask this question. My favorite question: uh, last minute penalty save to win the game or go up and score a goal. It has to be score a goal. Surely. Has to be like, score a goal. That doesn't come across. That that doesn't happen very often. No, but and if it does, you're always thinking about you're it. A, you're a legend. Mm. Like you're a club legend. You're gonna get after dinner talks. Everyone's oh. gonna talk about. You're gonna get a mural on a wall somewhere. No goalkeeper <laughs> to get murals. Uh, I've got a, a friend called Charlie Philpot who um was playing for Winchester City. And he scored the last minute winner. He's like five nine, five ten, but oh, scored the last minute winner. It's yeah. like that's incredible. Yeah, he still shows just, it, and people still talk about yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it doesn't happen often enough. So, right, uh, let's go back to when it started. Then, how did sure. you get into goalkeeping? Uh, well, my my dad was a was a left winger. He's very disappointed. I don't have a left foot. <laughs> it's just for standing on. But um, I basically started on right wing, 
then went to centre mid, then right back, then centre back, and just slowly worked further and further <laughs> back into goal. Um, I don't know. Just I used to be quick, which yeah. was kind of a good attribute, but everything else. I also realised from a very young age, if I played in goal, I'd get more time to actually play. You get more play. time, 100%. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit tactical there. But. Yeah, but even like uh, my son's team now, you know the goalkeeper plays the whole game mm. and everyone else plays like... Here and there. Here and there. They get half game. Mm. The next week they get... Might not start. Yeah, then, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but like the goalkeeper plays every week in it. Yeah. He's, he's an unbelievably good young goalkeeper at I seven years old. But it's still, you just think he's the one that's a bit different. He's a bit special because mm. he's, he's playing every week, but he gets more attention because mm. he's he's the one making saves. He's different. I don't know. Maybe it's just, obviously, I was in quite lucky. I was around quite a good group of guys yep. who were very good at playing. And so game time wasn't always guaranteed when I was playing outfield. Yeah. So, yeah, just slowly progressed further and further back. So, Went into goal at like... 10 and never came out. <laughs> yeah. So w when you first went in goal, can you remember the first game or the first training session? Yeah. And you actually got the bug for it? Yeah, 100%. So my first game I ever played in goal, um, it's clear as day in my mind. I don't know why it's still there, but it was a 2v1. And literally the sideline, I remember seeing all the faces. They were all like, oh, all that kind of stuff. They cut it to the right. I go like, stop them. I didn't really have much tech at the time. <laughs> yeah. But when they cut it back, I just kind of threw my body across. And yeah. when they shot the ball, it just came off my hands and yeah. out. And also, I just remember standing up and everyone was just going ballistic. So, yeah, locked in forever. Yeah, see, that's the Can't thing. forget it. One of those moments, and that's it. You're, you're just mm, hooked, you're hooked then, aren't you? Forever. Did you do much goalie training? Uh, not particularly. No, it's, it sounds really bad considering now I am a goalkeeper coach, but the coaches I worked with were quite traditional. It was just repetitive over and over and over again. And after a while, I was just like, I want to dive about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, I, I did a lot of other stuff. So, I, I did some dance and I did badminton, all this kind of stuff to improve reflexes, coordination, yeah. this kind of stuff. But was you doing this to help you with football or was yeah. it just outside interest? Uh, I mean, I was always, what do they call it? Like a sporting Bobby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sporting, sporting, Bobby, sporting Billy yeah. or something like that. I always used to love loads of sports, play rugby, all sorts as well. But most of the time it was just to improve the goalkeeping yep. so <laughs> see look uh, my parents used to we were similar we did me and my brothers we all did loads of sports we did athletics and like i ended up doing really well at javelin and stuff like oh, really? that and but then like we did karate for about eight years oh, and not, even now i go to my dad why did we do karate <laughs> like should have took us golf or tennis like a, a skill that we could use later on yeah. in life and he always just goes back to me helped your balance be a goalie and i said like, oh. <laughs> He's got you there. He's fucking right, isn't he? Like, he, he might well, become he's... useful. Yeah. <laughs> mean streets to London. <laughs> New one-on-one -on -one technique. <laughs> Not the bear hug. Yeah, the exactly. Chop. A karate chop. But yeah, so even like, like you're saying, using other sports to mm. help you. Like even like gymnastics and that. We've oh. got a young lad at the moment that's in our academy that does gymnastics or used to do really? gymnastics and his spring's unbelievable. Yeah. Flexibility must, yeah, like his exactly, split must be yeah. amazing as well. Yeah, so like oh, wow. all these things do help mm. attributes for being a goalkeeper. 100%. So, like, do you think that they had a big bear in then? Um, I, I genuinely, to this day, I genuinely think that badminton had a big effect yeah. because it's so quick. And it's just rapid, rapid. It's hand-eye coordination. Yeah. If you can stop, like, a, I think it goes, like, a 100-mile-an-hour shuttlecock, no you way. can stop a football. That's my thinking, anyway, yeah. with a smaller surface area. So, who knows? <laughs> yeah. So, was you just playing Sunday League? Uh, football so, or school level? Uh, school, and then, so I started off just playing for a local team, yep. and then I played for my school, um, did a little bit with, uh, my county team and all that kind of stuff. County was kind of good for me because obviously when you're a young keeper, you're the number one starter for your team. You've won, won a few things. You start yeah. thinking, oh, I'm, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm feeling myself. I'm yeah. pretty decent. You get to a next level and all of a sudden you're like, ah, I become a number two overnight. Right, okay. But it's a good experience because I'd never, never been a number two before. Yeah. So then learning how to like support and yeah. try and take your chance when you get it. So Yeah, that's, good. that's a great way of learning. Mm. Uh, how soon after that was you starting to get trials at clubs? Uh county probably about six months after yeah. but i only started really actually think i could take it really seriously when i turned around 14 15 yeah and then unfortunately just as i was really starting to like actually do it goalkeeper yeah. training you had really, at Bournemouth for, yeah and, and then, then Saints, yeah so um uh mossy he's the one that had a look at me at bournemouth gave me a option to carry on i also then had a saints one uh which i got called back to um, but I'd never even got to make the second trial because by that point in between, I'd gotten really ill. So yeah. just... can, you, can you tell us about this then? Um, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. The first it's flare up was, I guess, when um, I was playing rugby for my um, school team. I used to be an outside wing, so I just bombed past everybody. I was about 10 yards away from a try. Yeah. I just black out, completely cut out. And I think there's a video of it somewhere because friends were filming, oh, look at this, and then yeah. black out. It's not like going down the stages. I just went 
Um, we, you know, got rushed to hospital, yeah. getting all this kind of stuff checked. But, oh, uh, you know, it might have just been a one-off. Oh, okay, fine, whatever. Happens a week later, and then it happens several more times. And so MRIs, CAT yeah. scans, all sorts. So, That's yeah. Incredible. <laughs> so then, obviously, on that, the doctor's advice, then it was yeah, to I stop playing football. Yeah, I was, well, I couldn't play football. Um, I couldn't go to school. So I missed two years of school as well. So, yeah. That's amazing, <laughs> So yeah. then, obviously, so you what, two years of homeschooling then? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So then, obviously, you've got to then develop other interests and mm -hmm. stuff. And, Very quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, obviously, like, if you're not allowed to do any physical activity, no. are you? <laughs> or, or overexert yourself. No, I'm pretty much. Then, Even, yeah. like, walking a couple of miles would just yeah. put me in a state where I wouldn't be able to walk for a couple of days, basically. So it was... God. Yeah. <laughs> dealing with that would have been... Yeah, it was... Um, massive at 15 year old, did you say? Yeah. So... And obviously, you'll probably know it as well when you're a, you're a goalkeeper of football. Like, it's all, yeah, you work hard at school. You do, you do yeah, mum, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I did, I did, I do work hard at school. Yeah, I promise, yeah. yeah. But that's kind of all you care about and want and know. Yeah. So that kind of gets it's part of your personality in a weird yeah, way. So yeah. it gets ripped away, and you're like, I was. It was kind of like a midlife crisis yeah, at like yeah. fifteen. Who, like, am, who I? am I? Yeah. Who am I? Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So yeah. I bet it affects it. Obviously not being able to do any sports but it would affect your your moods your behavior oh, yeah. I, I bet you found that sort of stuff at yeah. that age tough yeah so i i don't know how <laughs> deep you want me to go no, but i fell into quite a dark yeah. depression um it, i wasn't good i later found out in life that i've actually got bpd so that right. didn't help either yeah yeah um so anybody that doesn't know it's kind of like bipolar yeah but with bipolar you can have like ups and downs every couple of weeks bpd it could just spring up and down every no, day uh, yeah. so and it's was, uncontrollable as yeah. well you don't know when you just yeah you'll be on top of the world and then like down that, yeah. on top of the world then down so yeah. i didn't even know i didn't have the diagnosis at the time yeah. so that was also playing on my head so, so then then you found music yeah so that was actually because of my mum do yeah my mum right. was a massive musician um back in her prime i guess um yeah. <laughs> so basically gave me a guitar and said do something with your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd always liked music and everything, but I never really taken it that seriously until then. But... So did you just start learning to play instruments yeah. then? Yeah. Uh, in between, in between my um, hard work and dedication of schoolwork, I was yeah. playing yeah, <laughs> guitar. Yeah. Definitely but, not instead of. <laughs> so, but you, you've you've taught yourself how to play guitar. Yep. What, what else did you uh, play? Drums, bass, piano. I did vocals. So yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> so then from that, did you enter a band or? Uh, I did uh, like. I always, once I knew football wasn't an option, yeah. well, well, I thought it wasn't an option, I went deep into like songwriting using like the emotions I was feeling. It's like an outlet, that kind of way. So, um, yeah, I did a lot of solo work. I did a lot of like battle of band competitions. I yeah. was in a couple of bands. None of them did particularly well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not listening but <laughs> um but yeah then I, royalties uh, now you want to shout them out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i did do um yeah so i went to college went to uni and yeah, yeah all in music and, yeah but yeah. so and then obviously you then start your health obviously takes an upturn mm. anyway and you get the all clear to, to yeah. be able to play football again yeah what age did that come at so that was just as covid hit actually literally so it's a typical a, isn't it it's a really weird situation <laughs> though so I just signed for a new songwriting company and I was like, oh, this is amazing. I worked so many years for this. You know, I'm releasing my own music and I'm writing for other people. Perfect. But it was very much COVID then hit four months later and it was last in, first out. So it's just, bye, sorry, come back in a couple of years because we don't know when you'll be able to tour. We won't know when you can do anything. Yeah, yeah. It's COVID. We don't know what's going on. But then two weeks before COVID happened, I'd had the all clear that I could do sport again. So it's it's a weird yeah, timing yeah. so I, I literally get told i can do sport again i think great but i can't really do that now then i get dropped and then i'm thinking well i might as well go do yeah i had some residuals come in and obviously they pay they pay you off yeah and so i thought well i've got months now where you know you can't really go out and about i can't no do, can music, do anything so i'm gonna go train in my garden yeah. myself and just throw balls at the wall and just yeah, see yeah. what is still there i guess so. yeah yeah <laughs> so but then from that did you start filming that stuff yeah pretty soon after yeah, yeah. so all the things i learned so my de my degree was in songwriting and artist development which is basically it's marketing itself yep so i kind of took the theory of that replaced the music put football into it and, and started training yourself back yeah. up and like your road to recovery yeah. almost yeah pretty it's an amazing much. story yeah. though obviously getting neil and then working out and i've got found you found a niche almost mm. at, your, at that time for yourself mm. So the GoPro and the goal, this is the one thing that even though he's one of my idols, um, I have to have a go at him for because everybody now says whenever I bring a GoPro out, oh, it's Ben Foster. I yeah. was like, technically, I was doing it like a year before him, but that's that's fine. It's yeah. like, it's okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, but, he's done quite well. Yeah, he's done, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's made it quite helpful, to be fair, because yeah. people used to look at me like I'm a weirdo. Oh, I bet, I yeah. I put one in, they were I like, it was really frowned doing? upon at first. Oh, yeah, it really was. Yeah. So many teams were like, we don't want you to do it. I was like, why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, but after Fozzie started doing it, it was just kind of... Became a normal thing. Yeah, you put one in now. the GoPro and they're oh, nice. And I'm yeah. like, cool. <laughs> yeah. I bet there's a lot of outfielders that are now jealous that they can't oh, yeah, carry 100%. around a GoPro. Or so a many of them started wanting to do like, yeah, yeah. those little tiny, tiny ones. So many of them want to wear yeah. them. And like the charity games, you see like Danny Aaron's and Jim's always, like, yeah. always having a little GoPro on their chest. So. Yeah. Because the, the magnetic ones fall off too often, yeah, they do. don't they? So yeah. Danny Aaron's has worn the full like... Chest strap, yeah. 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 Oh, it's, <laughs> it's crazy, that. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, you can't get away with stuff like that. Nah. So uh, when you've got the all clear, it, you must have been on a proper emo emo emotional roller coaster. Yeah. But then obviously COVID then hits and you, you're like wanting to get going. Yep. But you're three, four months without doing anything. Yeah, but you're just much. doing your own stuff. Yeah. So then you start training yourself in the back garden. Where did you see yourself going with this? Uh, to be completely honest, I literally just knew that until COVID was done, there's nothing I could do about music because I couldn't go audition or do anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to almost kind of have a little bit of fun with it. As weird as it sounds, I had enough money from the payout to um, just survive and all that yep. kind of stuff. So I thought, I'll have a go, see where it takes me and who knows and... A bit of fun. <laughs> was you thinking about making a comeback then into your pl playing or was you thinking long term, I've got to change the game a little bit and go, right, I'll, I'll start my coaching. But mm. there's also other avenues like taking the GoPro in the goal is mm. was obviously groundbreaking at the time. And I, I thought about at first I thought, can I still play? And obviously, but missing five, six years at that point, it yep. was a little when I did finally get back into it, you know, Sometimes you get a little bit rusty, but you know how to catch a ball. Yeah, you know how yeah. to do certain things. Not riding that, a bike. Yeah. You, you can still do it to a, a decent enough level, mm. but can you do it to the yeah. elite level? It's the game sense. Yes. My timings and obviously where I was younger, I was really fit. I did 100 meters. I was quick. I was explosive. And then all of a sudden I put on a little bit more weight and I still hadn't grown. Yeah. <laughs> I used to dominate for my height. I literally turned in year nine. I was this height. I was supposed to, I had a prediction that I was going to be six foot two. But obviously, with what happened, I stunted my growth. Yes. So I'm now stuck at 5'11". <laughs> so because of your health condition, it stunted your growth yeah. as well. That's... So it's and obviously, I don't want to go too deep into no, it, but course. I lost like at times I wasn't walking and that kind of yeah. stuff. So sometimes even when I still kick the ball, I think I'm making contact, but I don't make contact until yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. later. It's a really yeah, weird yeah. concept. Like muscle at at atrophy. Yeah. Where it's... It, obviously, you, you've broken down your muscles from inactivity yeah, for that amount of time. Yeah, I'm trying to re-coordinate. Yep. So um, I played a couple of games. Did it was fine, but I kind of realized pretty quick that I would have to throw myself into getting back up to that level. Or at that point, I was already starting to do okay with the socials. I yep. thought, or I could sidestep, do the coaching, which I love anyway, yep. and then kind of just, yeah. So when did you, when was that realization of the, the coaching aspect sort of stuff? Did you go straight into l looking at courses and stuff like that? Or <laughs> It's a really, so basically as soon as I was allowed to do training, like one-to-one -one and that kind of stuff again, uh, I met a guy called Antonio Brummer, um, who I became really, really good mates with, who was a goalkeeper coach, because I was looking for goalkeeper coaching. Um, and then on the second time I ever trained with him, he said, oh, you seem to know what you're talking about and this kind of stuff. I'm trying to expand my business. Do you want to come on as a coach? And I hadn't got any coaching badges or anything at that point. I said, like, I can. I yeah. don't have any badges. So I then instantly went and did my first levels, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. it literally just went from there. And I don't know. There's a few things. Like, I know I was supposed to do some sort of goalkeeping, but... With coaching, I genuinely feel like it's what I was supposed to do. Yeah. It's wishy washy as that sounds. Like no, it's, it's I think I'm a path, better yeah. coach than I ever was player. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it makes sense though. And then obviously with the the side that you do on socials mm. anyway, it it must fit in nicely. Oh, that beautifully. Because even like we were saying before, like the goalkeepers that you are coaching, for you to then go and watch them, but you're also giving them feedback. It's mm. not just you're getting reels and clips yeah. off them. You actually showing them mm. make mistakes or how to improve yeah so it's, it's very so whenever i have the full game i literally cut the entire game down to every single touch yes if it's a goal kick if it's like a back pass whatever it is it, every single touch they have gets clipped up obviously for the social media of i course. take out the boring punts it long punts it long yeah. receives a pass plays it wide yeah i put more of the interesting thing interesting things um obviously as goalkeepers we actually find some of those other things interesting yeah, but, yeah. Um, but most people are a catch isn't as impressive as a high flying save. A high flying unfortunately. save or coming for a cross through <laughs> yeah. bodies and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't make as great a visual. No. So uh, obviously with the social media side, I show more of that kind of stuff and try and big them up, hype them up. Because again, some of them have used it as a platform to then 
send stuff off and actually have opportunities other places, yes. which is really cool as well. But then I'll also send them a, I have a Google Drive with all of their games and their match reports and yeah. breaking down every single moment. So yeah, it, it kind of worked well because I've got all that, but then I can also do the social media side with it as well. So yeah. do you like the analysis side? I then? love the analysis yeah. side. I adore it. <laughs> yeah, Obviously, like you're saying, if you've got a, a, that interest in the marketing stuff and you mm. studied at college and stuff like that, you, you've, you've naturally picked up a way to look at things yeah. in the right perspective mm. anyway. Do you think that that obviously translates into how you break the things down to show the goalies? Yeah, I, th I think that kind of side kind of helps more with the, like, I don't know, the social media aspect, yeah. knowing what other people might think and USPs, all that kind yeah. of stuff, all the buzzwords people yeah, want yeah, to throw course, about, yeah. but it is important. Um, and marketing yourself, getting yeah. brand recognition. But um, with the analysis side, I think it's always just, I'm very, I don't want to use the wrong language, I'm very particular. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the PC word of saying it. So I, I just always love tech. I think good technique can get you very, very far. I think it still matters about how much you actually want it and yep. the passion, but if you have good tech, then it's always going to help. So. Yeah. So is that what you drill into your training sessions? Then? A lot. Yeah, <laughs> technique, technique, technique. Yeah. Yeah, Fitness yeah. and tech. Yeah. Because if you're a good goalkeeper, I think if you're naturally brave, you're naturally brave. If you're not the bravest, it's hard to, you can do it. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but it's, if you've got a naturally brave keeper and not one that's a little bit more timid, yeah. but they're the same levels and everything else, I always think that yeah. naturally, he wants to be here. He wants to put his body on the line. You can't teach that sometimes. You can't sometimes. teach that, yeah, yeah. Desire, it yeah. can't be taught. Yeah. 95th minute, you know, you've got to go crunch somebody. You might get kicked in the face, yeah. whatever it is. The best Are best. you going to do it? Yeah. The best <laughs> That's the bit that makes me hungry. <laughs> yeah, come on. You're saying that, and I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> like a drug almost. Yeah. Like the adrenaline I would rush. say that, yeah, it is. It's the, the goal. Most goalkeepers I've ever met and worked with is we like the fact that we should be hurt. Mm. but we just get on with it it's like the we always call it the don't rub it thing yeah. so like you, you get kicked in the face and you're like don't oh. rub it don't rub it don't yeah. show weakness like oh. it, that's just the mentality of a goalkeeper we're the ones that want to dive around and want to get dirty mm. it's <laughs> so i had a really bad so i broke and dislocated my finger nice. so that's the one that barely moves anymore All right so i got 60 percent mobility in it and i carried on playing the rest of the game yeah with it just flopping about yeah, yeah. and afterwards they're like you know, people are like, Ugh, and yeah, it's yeah. like, eh. yeah, it's just a finger. Cutting it? the glove off, but it's just like, yeah. yeah. No, it'll, be all, it'll be all right. It'll be right. It's still yeah. there. So. Yeah, exactly. A bit of tape and we'll be sound. Yeah. Right, uh, I want to test your goalie noise before we carry oh. on then. Uh, so I've already I think I've been you. sweating about. <laughs> so goalie or no goalie. Huge shout out to Forged Irish Stout for being part of this podcast. Listen to that beauty. An unbelievably smooth, creamy stout by Conor McGregor, the UFC legend. Not here to take part, but here to take over. Forged Irish Stout is on a mission to become the biggest Irish Stout. Conor McGregor has taken over the whiskey game. Now he's about to take over the Stout game. Me and my guests will be enjoying a few cans in the next few episodes. If you fancy checking it out too, make sure you hit the description below and find out where you can get Forged Irish Stout. Forged Irish Stout will be available in Asda nationwide come August. Let's get back to the podcast. I've got five current goalkeepers from the Premier League, two for you. Okay. Because you oh, work in no. Academy. <laughs> uh, and then I've got... Uh, Five made-up names. Well, I'm not, they're not made-up names. I've got five actors from the, the newest series out. Oh, God. Okay. Okay? Oof. So it's one point for each correct answer. Uh, what do you, how do you reckon you're going to do? When I play along at home, I normally do, get like six or seven, yeah. and I guarantee I'll get two. Yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> I've switched it up a bit here. Oh, no. Right, so number one, Luca Hunter. Goalie. He is a goalkeeper. Oh, he is the <laughs> star strong. He is a, a goalkeeper at Tottenham. Ah, oh, beautiful stuff. Yep. Uh, number two, Theo James. Not a goalie. He is not a goalkeeper. Oh, get in. He is the get actor in uh, The Gentleman. Oh, okay. New series. Oh, I love really that. good series as well. Oh, I've just finished that. watching a really good series. Oh, I love that. All right. Number three, Jacob Knightbridge. Goalie. He says with hesitancy, he is the West Ham oh, Premier League goalkeeper. <laughs> Premier League two goalkeeper. Good Can't start. Three, three. Happy days. Flying. I can finish there. I'm happy. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Right, number four, Cole Hauser. Why does that one ring a bell? But I don't know why it rings a goalie. 
He is not a goalkeeper. Oh. He plays Rip Wheeler in Yellowstone. Oh, okay. Yeah. One, a series that I've been told loads about. I've not started yet. <laughs> There's a couple. There's a couple that I'm going to mention in a minute. Uh, right. Number five, Fabian Moretz. I'm so bad with pronunciation. <laughs> uh, Fabian Rozek. I'm guessing it's a silent M. Uh, Rob, um, looking at you approvingly. <laughs> Mrozek. I'm going to... S- I'm going to say not a goalie, but, you know, the pronunciation might have thrown yeah, you off. Yeah, it might have so. thrown you off. I'll, I'll tell so. you how it's spelled. It's M-R-O-Z-E-K. I'm dyslexic, so I ain't going to yeah. help. <laughs> uh, just said anything. So no goalie? No goalie. He is a goalkeeper. Oh. He is the Liverpool Premier League 2 goalkeeper. Oh, I really should have known that. Rozek? M-R-O-Z-E-K. Apologies for any bad pronunciations. <laughs> right, number six, Aaron Motten. Mm, not a goalie. He is not a goalkeeper. Kitty. He plays Maximus in the new series Fallout, oh, okay. which I can't wait to start watching. Do you remember the oh. game Fallout? What the like Fallout yeah. seventy six? Yeah. So like, there's a series what? now that's really? coming out. I didn't know that. Yes. So, oh, Fallout. I think they've only done Fallout ten. three was my jam. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I can't wait to start watching that. Right, number seven, Hiroyuki Sanada. Um, goal goalie. He is not a goalkeeper. Oh. He is an actor in the new series Shogun. Ah. Very famous actor as well. Right, number eight, Eli Harrison. Goalie. He is a goalkeeper for, you want to have a guess? I should have, have a look at him. <laughs> Manchester United. Oh, uh, I was going to say yeah, City. He's to be one fair, of the goalkeepers so. at Man U. Ah. Yeah, I've actually heard of him. I think he had a loan spell somewhere. Right, number nine, Ovi Ihiri. Goalie. He is a goalkeeper. Oh, he is a, I'm over the moon with this. <laughs> he is the Arsenal Premier League 2 goalkeeper. Ah. Oh, so I think. Was, no, that's a different one. Don't worry. I'm thinking of another keeper that was. um. Oh, who did he film with? I can't remember who he filmed. Uh, with Mini Minter. Oh, right. Okay. I can't remember who it was now. He's a Spurs keeper, though. Oh, I think. is he? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Decent. Right. Uh, number 10, Jonathan Banks. Not related to Gorn Banks, is he? Well, possibly. <laughs> uh, not a goalie. He is not a goalkeeper. Oh, he I'm plays so... Bud in the series Constellation. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Happy days. Big actor. Seven out of ten. <laughs> I'm, I'm over good. the moon with that. <laughs> yeah, that's good going that. Good guessing. Very good guessing. I can relax now. I can just yeah. sit back. <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, I want to talk to you about your role at Eastleigh then. Yeah, 100%. Uh, obviously, you said that you're working from... All age groups, pretty much. Yeah. Right. Down to what age group is so the youngest? I, I don't work with the... So the first team I yes. don't work with, obviously, uh, Vince Bartram's there now. Yep. So former Arsenal. Yeah. yeah. But um, And the EDS, Vince still does a lot with. Um, then there's a guy called Jamie Wiseman, who's technically my boss, uh, who works throughout some of the other ones, but I'll step in. So yep. that's one of the sessions I'm doing tonight. I'm having to actually... Oh, nice. Because um, he's really badly hurt his back. So oh, I'm actually yeah. stepping in. Stepping so, in for a while, yeah. Yeah. So Fuse 2 and like... Flip the disc, so yeah, yeah. bad way. That's not great, that. <laughs> it's gonna need an epidural and that, isn't it? Ooh, honestly, so yeah. yeah, all the way from the under tens, all the way up to under eighteens. I yep. say. So yeah, obviously, especially goalkeepers going through uh, that age group mm. go through a lot of changes emotionally, yeah. physically. Is that something that you always have to factor in then? Definitely, and a lot of them like the some puberty th- stage for any age, like for any kid, mm. is difficult. I've seen some kids already come through that were like really confident as kids and then kind of shied away and then are just regaining that again. Yep. Does that makes sense. And then there's some that are polar opposite, but it's, yeah, sometimes I think the biggest thing I have seen, and I know it's, it's such a cliche, but it is annoying if they haven't had their growth foot yet, you sometimes just see their confidence fall off a cliff. Yep. Even though if they might be one of the best technically there yep. because they're not as big as like, I don't know what they feed some of these keepers now. There's, yep. I've got a 15 year old who's six foot five. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you're just looking around like well, what is going on see when they do go through those growth spurts I had it when I was that age but I, I, I lost all my coordination for a oh, bit really? and it like but do you spot that can you see when goalkeepers coordination's gone or their balance they is dangly. slightly off and they, yeah. yeah and like they're, they're not quite at it and mm. you can see that yeah it's to be fair what I do quite like where I am at East at the moment is you kind of can just pull them aside and you just drill them until they're more ready again yep. obviously some you know Cat One Academies might be very like very on top of it like not good enough gone because yeah. they've got so many options but yeah. here we still have to make sure we're developing what we've got and then trying to keep progressing them but yeah, yeah so the mental side i think is one of the hardest parts for any keeper to go through especially young keepers because yeah. 
you build resilience as you grow up. You remember all the ones you've thrown in your own goal and yeah, all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. <laughs> At that age group, is there quite a high turnover of kids that come in and out? Yeah, so it's, from what I heard, it used to be a higher turnover, but we're giving more and more of a chance at the moment, yeah. but it's still once or twice a season. So midway through, if it's really not up to scruff, yeah. we've obviously got talent ID groups as well, which might step up. So yeah. there's actually a couple that I've worked with from the talent ID group that have, and in private sessions that have then stepped up into the actual academy. Okay. And that's obviously a great feeling for them and as yeah. the coach, because thinking they weren't good enough, but now they are. Yeah. But unfortunately, the way of football is they're going to go up. Somebody's going to have to go. Yeah, that's so. the thing too. Obviously, there's pros and cons to it mm. all. If you're pushing someone on and they're doing really well, you do you then have to have the same conversations <laughs> with the people that are not doing so well? Luckily, I've managed to avoid a lot of them. Yeah. Because obviously, my boss tends to do yep. more of that because he's been doing it donkeys and yep. he's just used to it. But there's been a couple of situations that, not even just Eastley, but other clubs, I've had to go to them. So, really sorry, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, like, that, that's obviously a horrible thing to do. Mm. Do you find it's the parents that don't respond as well? Yeah. So, sometimes the kids, like, I've only had to do probably one or two handfuls of people like that. But the majority of the time, it's because, I don't know, a lot of the time I feel like parents live a lot through their kids. Of course, so, yeah. And it's, they kind of start, I've had a couple of experiences where they've almost started buying fancier cars and nicer places wow. and started spending more, even though their kids are still 16 and they haven't made it yet. Wow. And when they get released, they're like, but he was supposed to be our hope to be our buy all this stuff. And the amount of pressure those kids must be under must be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you said, like parents do live through their kids mm -hmm. a, a bit, and especially you get a lot now that are trying to push their kids into football, mm -hmm. and they don't realise the, the the margins that mm -hmm. actually do make it. Mm -hmm. What is it, one percent, something like that? I think, yeah, I think it must. Be, I think it might be even lower. Point than zero that, yeah. zero one make it yeah. into like a top two league or something. Yeah, like. exactly. So Mental. like, it, it's so difficult now to, and even like the the average playing career length now, mm -hmm. when you get reach professional, is seven years. So. The longevity aspect mm. is so hard. So even like these parents or the kids that are trying to get there mm. don't realize that it's not going to last for long. No, You've got to make the most of your time. 100%. And a lot of them realize don't realize that professional level doesn't mean just Premier League where no. they're going to be earning 40K a week. It's, exactly. Yeah. you know, all the way down to National League, National League, South and North, and yep. then you go into places like Southern League and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So, which is more semi-pro, but you get what I mean. Like yeah. it just because your son might play professional you might not be earning 10 grand a week. So don't buy that Merc yet. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. And obviously, like I always make sure people have other interests mm. and, uh, and they're still educating themselves mm. because it's so, as a professional footballer, the hardest thing was to not be distracted. Mm. Obviously, everything I did from six years old till I signed my YTS papers at 16 was to become a professional footballer. So when people were telling me, you still got to do well in school, you don't realise that until you're 36, mm. that it's so important. And that's what's obviously part of uh, an educator, a coach's mm. role is to still make sure people yeah. are on the right track. I think that's, obviously scholarships have become more and more of a thing. So yeah. they are coming out with some qualification, but you still see like, they, they'll do like three hours worth of study and they'll just then be like, either one really stressed about it and yeah. then they're off their game or they are so quick to get out to the pitch yeah they haven't done that so it's one or the other yeah, yeah. so the schooling can then either impact the goalkeeping or the goalkeeping impacts like the yeah. schooling so it's yeah nightmare that's 22 <laughs> well i, I want to get onto the social media side then mm. more uh like i said you've got 60 million views on one of your reels yeah. <laughs> just insane do, do you see that happening before it happens can you predict the clips that will do well I used to think I could, <laughs> and then some of them that you think this is going to bang, this is going to be awesome, yeah. flop. And then, so the 16 mil one, I thought that's a pretty good one. It might get one or two mil, and then it just blew up. I was yeah. like, oh my. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there was one on TikTok as well, which I think is 21 mil. And I just thought it was just going to be an average video. And yeah. It just didn't stop. That's crazy. Every day that's I was just looking back as like an extra mil views. I was like, what is going on? So are you looking at stuff that will work well in the algorithm, or are you just going, this is the right clip for that game, and that's it? I try and balance it out a little bit more now because otherwise I feel like you get in your head too much. Yep. So I'm trying to, obviously with TikTok moving to more of long form content, yes. but YouTube still wanting to be shorter content on that. It's difficult balance to find anyway. Yep. So I'm trying to do the longer stuff for TikTok a couple of times a week and then the shorter stuff for YouTube a couple of times a week and then cross promote as well. Yeah. So 
because obviously like we spoke about off air but your you, the youtube longer form content is a real struggle yeah but to do the short form stuff you've done unbelievably mm. well in and it's trying to find the perfect mix to, yeah because financially you need to make it work as well 100%. and obviously the longer form stuff will earn more ad revenue mm -hmm. But if it's the short stuff that works, you need to keep churning 100%. it all out, don't you? Yeah. So obviously, I managed to get 100k plaque, which is insane. incredible. That's like a life dream when you're yeah. growing up, like seeing all these massive people get a silver play button. You're like, oh, one day maybe I might just get it. Yeah. And now it's hanging on my wall. I'm like, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> but that all came from the shorts. But yeah, that's what I mean. And like, obviously, we've churned out. I think 65 episodes now, and we've we're still at like 10k subs. And you think like you just got to keep the consistency it's, mm, it's and then, so now we've started to get more into like doing actual training sessions right. and showing more stuff like that because you've got to be diverse you've got to show everyone mm. every aspect of the of the what, what you do especially since obviously for your level as well everybody wants to see like there's a lot of people out there saying this is how you train like a pro goalkeeper and they play the sunday league yeah but you're a pro goalkeeper and yeah, you have been yeah. for a long time so they want to see behind that curtain of course so. yeah and like some of the the tiktokers i've worked with and that like they don't realize how hard that we actually do kick a ball mm. in comparison to a YouTuber or a TikTok. Yeah. And even like the, when I was going in goal and I would make some of their shots look so easy that they thought were good shots yeah. and it made them up their game and they mm. actually had to shoot, like score weldies. Yeah. But that, that they, they would use that one clip over and over again, over and over again. <laughs> I beat a pro goalkeeper. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's like, I beat a pro goalkeeper from 30 yards yeah. out, but it was, it was one out of a hundred. Yeah, literally. But you don't have to paint that picture in a clip. Mm. It, yeah. It's amazing what editing can do sometimes. But yeah. I think the biggest thing I've found from working, like I've been lucky enough to work with like some very, very good goalkeepers, like pro keepers here and there, the consistency as well. Yeah. Like. I'll name drop a little bit when I, I, I worked with EA and that kind of stuff and yep. worked with Ilan Melia we did a penalty shootout and all of us were trying to take pens and he we just thought he just knew what we were going to do and he would just catch it like it was nothing we had people that putting full welly were thinking oh this is going top he just catches it and he wouldn't even die for something and I'm like what are you doing yeah. <laughs> like how yeah. are you doing that and like crosses we did like a training session yep. cross coming just didn't drop anything Yeah. didn't matter how hard you pushed you like three people against me just you want to try out, it again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave some trainers. Yeah. It's a joke. Oh, well, yeah. I've seen it on the Astro Turf indoor. Like, it's incredible. Mm. See, look, does that give you inspiration then when 100%. you see yeah. like the elite doing mm. it? 100%. Like, the second I worked with him, that was kind of a big make or break moment for me as well because I kind of realized I can do the social media side as well. Like, yeah. This is actual a possibility. But I took that and basically, ever since I work over and over and over again, you know, the classic motto don't do it to its right do it till you can't get it wrong yeah and my keepers hate me for it yeah, yeah um yeah. but after a while they start seeing the improvements when yeah. they're taking because a lot of goalkeeper coaching now i'm not saying it's wrong everybody can coach in different ways each keeper needs different coaching but i think when you're younger getting those reps in over and over and over again i don't see it enough where you make them dive 100 times you make them catch a ball 100 times and then on a half hole and then a dipper over yeah. and over and over yeah. and over again that's kind of what i grew up with more and obviously now it's more let's make sure your spread saves lovely and let's do this and how's your ping and which is important don't get me wrong but i still think it's also important to it's muscle memory isn't yeah it? exactly yeah, you, you, you don't need, have to think about it after yeah, a while. yeah you need to train them to have good technique but to be able to do it consistently mm. and when you're under stress yeah, and don't even think about it yeah and check like the different scenarios different weather conditions mm. different mm. playing conditions different times of the game call for different types of saves yeah. it's like the education behind why a goalkeeper is doing it as well mm. Like obviously, like you're saying, like the consistency aspect is huge. Like the more touches of the ball that any goalkeeper in any session can have is the best way of learning. Mm -hmm. uh, I think talking on that, I've, I remember something. It was uh, with David Cole, I think. David was, Cole, yeah. Yeah, you guys were talking about kicking into the wind and yeah. that kind of stuff. And yeah. again, listening to that, I was like, that's such a good thing. But I know so many keepers don't even think about don't that. Don't even think about it. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, it's like that. Honestly, but like I, I, I'm working with pro goalkeepers that don't know that, Blimey. and it's just. But that's you have to do it to figure it out. Mm. And like I, I knew it from years ago that like you can't kick directly into the wind, no matter mm. what it's saying. So you, you need to create yourself that advantage, and mm. that's all that is. Is I, I kick across the wind. Yeah, and say, it, it, it ends up working. Yeah, hundred percent. And even though you think, ah, oh, I'm not going to be able to kick it as far. If you're kicking directly into the wind, it ain't going far no, anyway. Say, <laughs> so you may as <laughs> well less accurate in the first place. Exactly. So. Yeah. So all these sort of things, it just takes practice and stuff like that. Uh, oh, what about the reception you get from your own goalkeepers then with the cameras? I know we've talked about the old v young. Yeah. Um, what about the oppositions as well? It's a nightmare. If they score, 
without doubt, they're like looking at it. If they get yeah. a penalty, I basically told my keepers at this point, they're going to try and rattle the camera. Yeah, just hit the and camera. And nine yeah. times out of ten, they try and rattle the camera. But then <laughs> but then you're ma probably making your keepers make more penalties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we actually had a penalty shooter last night for a team I worked with uh, called Hyde and Dibden. And my uh, keeper, Luke Deacon, he made two penalty saves. Yep. Insane, protect so. the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your motto in training? Uh, protect the no. camera. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so a lot of the younger ones absolutely adore it. But yeah. it's then when somebody scored, especially, you know, you might face like a, I don't want to generalize, but I'm in like the Wessex Prem. So Pompey teams, they love it. Yeah. They score past you. They're going right up to the camera yeah. and like, oh, yeah, you saw. <laughs> but then again, from the flip side of that, it's not great for your goalie, but it makes great clicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so you're, you're benefiting in, in two ways. Obviously, mm. your own goalkeeper is an educational tool. Yeah. And like we were saying before, that you're able to, to, to do both. Yeah. But also strip it down to, to know what works for you. Mm. But it's, it's also then they kind of get used to it because they see it again and again that, you know, these people want to score past you. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't make these saves, they're going to take yeah. the mick out of you. Yeah. But that's why you have to work even harder to make sure if you face them again, you don't let him score because yeah, otherwise yeah. he's going to do the same thing. Do, do you find as well that some goalkeepers will up their game knowing there's a camera behind 100%. them because they know that the faults will get shown, but also mm. there, will, there will be a highlight reel if they do well. Yep. Yeah, so um, some of them just... I've, I've worked, so a guy called Mac Allen, um, who's now playing at Bournemouth, sensational goalkeeper, one of the best I've worked with, especially at his age group, ridiculous keeper. There was one game where I didn't have the GoPro. He had a fine game, but then the next game I had a GoPro, and I think he had a much harder opposition, but he was just pulling save after save. Yeah. And there's a couple of times I put in the notes, he looks down at the camera after, like he's pulled up a worldy, like top hand off onto the he bar. He wants to make sure that red light's on. Yeah, bounces back. They take another shot and he's making make like a double save. So off onto the bar, bang, bang, second save. And he's like pumped up and he looks back and like, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so again, like he's making sure that that light's on because mm. he wants that clip. Yeah. So it works both ways almost. Yeah, it's the one afterwards. Make sure you send me that. Make sure you send me yeah, that. Yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> what about your captions then that you add to, to the... Obviously? Yeah, I, I I tried to do some voiceovers, but yeah. it just didn't seem to do as well. Obviously, with the the text-to-speech one, everybody gets so used to it now that yeah. it kind of just hooks them in, especially if you lose a big, like, has a worldie or yeah, yeah. the reserve Stinker. keeper or... yeah. Red card and, you know, so. <laughs> Is it, so are you just generalizing that because you know that they work then? Yeah. It's and smart. then we get into more of the yeah. nitty gritty after. You do have you, to hook their attention first. Do you have to change that for different platforms? Sometimes, yeah. Depending on. So Instagram's kind of a weird one. They, If you don't, you don't have to hook as hard to start with, but you have to make sure that you're constantly showing something decent. Yep. Whereas TikTok, if you hook them early or YouTube, you hook them really, really early. It seems to do a little bit better anyway because that, roll off is always going to happen anyway yeah. but yeah is that also i find when i use tiktok you never know the actual length of the video not many people check for the mm. line at the bottom so whether your clips five seconds or a minute long mm. you actually their engagement yeah. longer because they don't know how long they're going to be exactly. watching for and then if they get gripped they oh now he's made a cool save yeah. or, oh he's made a bad error yeah what is he going to make another error or is he going to make another save he's going to recover is yeah. he going to mess this up so yeah yeah, I find that really interesting about changing for different platforms. Mm. It's, really it's storytelling. At the yeah, end of the it is, day, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Uh, go back in uh, to the working with the EA then. How did that all come about? <laughs> at first, I thought I was being scammed, yeah. I'll be honest, because I just got a, uh, a DM off of Insta. And I thought it was one of my mates on a wind up. So I put it in the group chat, like, who, who is, is it? Who is it? Yeah. And they're like, no, mate, that's sick. I was like, no, come on, who is it? And then it turned out to be true. So it's when he um, got his like special card for being yeah. like an up and comer uh, last season. And um, yeah, so we got to film some content just to like basically show off how good he was. Yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> and much. And he's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's big as well, wasn't he? Massive. Yeah. But yeah, I got told as soon as I turned up, he said, you know, the person that was like running it for EA was like, you know, he's tall, you know, he's he's French. He does speak English, but you know, he might be very standoffish. Yeah. You know what it is. I took one of my other keepers who's six foot four. And the first thing I said to him, so I've never felt so small in all my life. Yeah. And he just cracked about laughing. Oh, and we just got on just really well after that. Yeah. that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So even like with that, was you able to put on as much as you wanted or was it you were told you're allowed 10 minutes to do this? We, I had to have everything I wanted to do confirmed beforehand. Okay. So I couldn't just turn up and say, we're going to do this. It had to be like before the shoot approved basically. Yep. Um, and then obviously, let's say I, it didn't happen to be fair to yep. him. But if I like megged him and then gone around him and then embarrassed him, never going to happen, but I wouldn't be able to show that. But 
that was again never gonna yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. return off it was like that's not gonna happen um but then yeah you get given a time slot and just have to get it done get as much content to as get you it done. can out yeah. of that time yeah. yeah do you have to get that approved then yep so then before you post it then also have to send them off drafts if they're not happy with it edit again yeah. do this do this do that yeah, yeah. Use certain sounds, use certain captions. Right, okay, so, yeah, yeah. So it is, a lot of it's controlled, but it's also... What an opportunity. Yeah, you an, do it an every incredible day. opportunity. Have you had more opportunities like that since? Uh, so there was a live penalty one I was supposed to go do, but I unfortunately broke my wrist and two fingers. Yeah. So <laughs> I couldn't go do it. Um, there's a lot, just a lot of charity games as well, which yeah. is the main thing I'm really focusing on. I've got a good record. So yeah. for those ones, I'm not the goalkeeper coach, I'm managing them. And out of 14 charity games now, I've won 13. So nice, yes. Yeah, trying to keep, keep that going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How, see, like those opportunities and stuff like that. You, you've obviously been at Sellers and at Leighton yeah. Orient. You've, you've had some unbelievable opportunities. Oh, yeah. How do these come about? Just because of your social media following as yeah. well? And so social media following, I then know people of people and all yes. this kind of stuff. Because I knew certain other people, that's why I wear Puma gear now. Because um, like exclusivity. So yeah. I only wear Puma boots, even though I used to wear Adidas. All the Puma gear of my like personal brand. Yep. Obviously, if I'm wearing club stuff, I'm allowed to wear. Yeah, of course. You know, um, a rare, obviously for Eastleigh, I'm allowed to wear a rare. Yeah, um, because that would make it a little bit awkward. Yeah, but if I'm not working for a club, it has to be Puma now and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so just yeah, insane opportunities just come out, and sometimes they just come out of nowhere. Yeah, of course. So. Yeah, and like you said, it's more about the connections that you've got and the people that you know that. Mm they'll recommend you or yeah. other people to put you forward and vice versa. It works the same way mm. that like, that's how the world goes around. Really. You, you want good people to do well. And mm. do you find that those opportunities are a bit daunting at first? Or do you, because you do a lot of, you do it all yourself. Obviously mm. you, you don't really have a, a, an outside help, do you? No. So it's all run by little old me. Um, the one that I was most terrified for was I did a shoot with ball launcher. And they were going to see if we can catch an 80 mile an hour fastball. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. I, what an experience. But um, Dutch was there and he, he caught it. Yeah. I think if I had two more goes, I could have caught it. You reckon, but yeah. I only got like 10 goes. So I think I could have just... what distance that. was that? Uh, it was just at edge of the box. Oh, okay, yeah. Penalty spot. Penalty spot, cool, yeah, right, it's, okay. It was quick. Yeah, quick. Because they ramp it up. So it starts at 40, like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's a doddle, Easy, doddle, yeah, doddle, yeah. doddle. And then it gets to 70, you're like, ooh. Yeah. And then 80, it's almost like just a ramp. And you're like, oh, yeah. Uh, that was daunting because I knew the keepers that I was working with were most likely to catch it. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I don't want to be the one that does it. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah. Is there any content creators that you're, you're desperate to work with or that you've got lined up? Uh, I don't know what I'm allowed to say lined up wise. <laughs> um, there is obviously some people I do want to work with. Yeah. Possibly being one of them. Yeah, of um, course. One of the new games that I'm managing in, I'm going to be up against Mark Goldbridge. Nice. So that's that's going to be really him. cool. Christ, I think the, I think the world would want you to be. <laughs> so it's going to be Goldbridge Ball versus Brown Ball. So we'll, yeah. we'll find out. We'll find out. Um, yeah, there is stuff coming along, but I just don't know how no, much I'm allowed yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to, you don't have to reveal stuff. Yeah. If I could, I would, but yeah, I don't want it to fall through because I've got excited. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, right, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about goalkeeper gloves then. Mm -hmm. Right, obviously doing what you do, you, you've been open to a, a lot of different brands yep. and stuff like that. What have you personally found about goalkeeper gloves? Uh, the thing, I always used to love negative cut. Yep. I thought it was the bee's knees. And then ironically, I started using roll cut more. I yep. fell in love with it. Yep. Again, the smaller hands, it's just more contact. Yep. On it. So um, I bounced around from a different couple of brands and all this kind of stuff. But that's where I was quite lucky. So I worked with a company called Goalkeepers Anonymous. Yes. So GA, they're um, based over in Ireland. But they sell a, a wide variety of like high quality goalkeeper gloves. Yep. Uh, so I've been able to like test out what I actually like. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I did a couple of shoots with one glove, and I have fallen in love with what yep. one glove do. So um, I'm very much wearing them the majority of the time. I've worked with some other really good brands like Calier and Titan, all this yep. kind of stuff. They are fantastic, boss. Yep. But um, yeah, one glove is kind of like do you my go-to now. Do you find that like if you could fuse one of the gloves into like a couple of different like a different cut from a cut mm. from Calier, the latex from the one glove, the strap. Yeah. Like it would just make the, the best glove ever. Yeah. So Calier's like they're obviously it's so many are strapless now. Yes. I, I am a little bit partial to a strapless glove sometimes. It's weird. <laughs> I find it weird. <laughs> but, but no one's come to me yet with a glove for me to wear with because I wear spines in a few of my fingers. Oh, really? So like I don't think that would be possible. <laughs> yeah, because you go hyper light and then yeah, all of a sudden you've got exactly, spines. Yeah. There. Um but how tight it is on the wrist is so nice. Yeah. Um one gloves isn't bad by any stretch, but 
I would like it really, really tight. Yep. So, so wear a strap. <laughs> just wear a strap. That's what, that's what, that's what they're there for. They no? flap about too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, a, a well-made glove is so important. Mm. And obviously, you'll see it from like coaching 10-year-old kids. Yeah. See, like, what advice do you give them about gloves? So many of them turn around and start buying... No, just for, you know the Adidas, like oh, the Preds, are amazing gloves. Yeah, super, super sticky. I've tried them myself, but they wear away so quickly. Yeah. And they're like, "Why are these wearing out so quickly?" And I'm like, "You're playing on Astro, and they're only supposed to last a certain amount of yeah. time. It's super soft latex. That's why I always do push for like what people used to call the mid brands. Yes, but they're growing and growing and growing. Like the One Glove, Calia, that kind of AB stuff. AB ones, AB ones. There's, there's loads of unbelievable mm. brands out because you get four millimeters German latex, which is more durable. Yeah, still super tacky and it's. If you're 10, yep. you don't need the greatest grip in the world. No, exactly. Yeah. So. Even like to down to kids looking after their gloves, mm. I find so important. 100%. See, like, obviously, even now when people train with me and their gloves are dirty and their boots are dirty, I find it like it's like a mark of disrespect to mm. the session. Do you find that as a coach? Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> I have a pet peeve, and I've, I've banned it in my sessions, is when keepers use Vaseline on their gloves. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Purely just because I know some of the other guys... You know, if you're playing pro, it's fine because you can just get some more gloves. But some of the other guys that are there, they might, I know there's backgrounds. They might only get one pair of one gloves, pair of gloves for, a for a season. Yeah, 100%. So if it starts messing them up, I know that that's not fair on them. So I've just banned it. The second you turn 18, you're allowed to do it. Because at that point, I think you should. Yeah. It's your own man. Yeah, yeah almost. your own man. Get your own gear. But when your parents are paying for it, I'm a yeah, little bit yeah. more like. Because it does, it ruins your gloves. Mm. And like. It's very, it's very good. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it, it does. It's unbelievable for, for one session, two yeah. sessions. But. I always say like that's like the the worst case scenario. You shouldn't mm. be training like that every day. No. You shouldn't be playing like that every game. You get too confident and yeah, you're used to it. Yeah, exactly. Because then when you actually put a new pair of gloves on and you haven't got that, mm -hmm. it's it's a weird like where do, where's, yeah a hundred percent. So like I always say like if it's the most torrential rain you've ever played in, chuck on an old pair of gloves mm. just for kickoff. Don't even warm up in them mm. because. You might warm up in a decent pair of gloves or a normal pair of gloves and go, no, I tell you what, I'm confident enough today in these. But if you're not, that's mm. when you go, this is slightly different. This yeah. might offer me something slightly different. Mm. I mean, we did a, a filming session on our pitch the other day, and I noticed on our crossbar, on our post, someone has got a big blob of Vaseline. Oh, really? so one of our opponents we must have played against in the last couple of weeks has done it. And I'm like, it's still quite disrespectful to leave it on the post. Yeah. Obviously, and then I was thinking... In this session, I was thinking, what about if the ball hits? I was that? just thinking the same thing. What if it does? Is it going to react call it? differently yeah, off say. the post? So I've pulled our groundsman and went, "There's something on the uh, the post. You need to clean that off." I was like, because you just don't Small know. Small margins, yeah, a hundred percent. And you're always looking for these sort of things. Yeah, you'd be mad if you make it like a fingertip save and normally it'd just skim out, and then because of that, it grips in and goes in. Exactly, you'd, yeah, human, wouldn't you? A hundred percent. And then finally, obviously, I want to talk about the the last bit of content stuff. Where do you see goalkeeping content going? Because obviously we've seen the like the Theo Bakers and the Chris mm. MDs and it's free kicks from outside the yeah. box and it's like the perfect goal. Goalkeeping's so different. Mm. I, I genuinely think there's a lot of guys that have done some incredible work doing some very appetizing, like easy on the eye kind of goalkeeping, like really nice side ones, yes. great control, catching with one hand, high dive saves. But I think a lot of it now is because a lot of people are doing the same thing. It's starting to turn more towards they want to see if you can do that, can you also play in goal? Yep, okay, that is, yeah. So I think I was speaking to, a, I won't name them, but I've been speaking to a couple of guys who did some more of that content, but now just showing that they are just tremendous goalkeepers as well. Yep. Because people just say, oh, it's just flashy. Blah, 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 because everybody hates online. Yeah, no, <laughs> of course. Yeah. But I think it's going to start slowly, slowly, especially after what Ben did game footage is becoming more and more yeah. relevant on TikTok, on YouTube. I'm seeing more and more of it. And it makes it harder because my niche is kind of, I'm trying to have to adapt to it a little bit. Yep. So my whole thing is now I'm trying to show high quality goalkeepers instead of just Sunday league goalkeepers. Yeah, because yeah. obviously I, I was saying to you off air and stuff, but I want to see the the flashy stuff that YouTube goalkeepers do, mm. the sidewinders and the top hand saves. I want to see them do that, but make it relevant in a game. Mm. So if they're showing us a, a reel or a clip of that, show us when they've done yeah. it in a game. Uh, when the pressure's on. Yeah, and You exactly. only get one chance and to do it. That's it, yeah. So I would love to see more realistic game scenario mm. stuff because it's. I, f I feel like that we should all be educating. 100%. There's stuff that's there for us to look nice and feel mm -hmm. nice and 
to highlight goalkeeping, but there's also an educational tool mm. behind it. And I think that's where like yours is a very good hybrid of mm. that because you're showing realistic game situations yeah. and keepers doing things in games that are for right or wrong reasons. Yeah. So you, you're never there just to, if you're working, you have a close working relationship with goalkeepers, yeah. goalkeeper coaches. It's, it's a union at the end of the day. But you know, I'm not just going to kill them if they made a terrible mistake. There's yeah. been ones that they've made a mistake and I haven't posted it for weeks. I've let it yeah. become more dull so they don't care as much and then I'll show it. But yeah. You know, if they have an absolute stinker and it's a horror show, I'll be like, oh, it's corrupted and footage went. Yeah, you know, yeah, oh. yeah, of course. You have to protect them <laughs> Yeah, exactly. As well. But yeah. it's also, if they make something good, but then also bad, show the contrast. Yeah. Goalkeeping isn't a position where it's always going right. Yeah. And yeah. it's not always perfect. Yeah. 100%. And it's actually sometimes the best saves and the best keepers are the ones that can make something when it's not a perfect situation. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then before I ask my final question, what's next for you as a goalkeeper coach? I really want to just keep developing my Obviously, I'm I'm still quite a young coach. You're still young. Yeah. You're like 24. 26. 26 now. 26. Sorry. I'll take 24. Though. Yeah, I think I read that on one of your yeah. descriptions. You haven't changed that. That's yeah. your fault. Ooh, my bad. <laughs> 26, yeah. yeah so, so you're still very I'm a young. baby as a goalkeeper yeah, exactly, coach. Exactly, yeah. So it's just trying to get as much knowledge as physically possible, work with as many high-level keepers and goalkeeper Keep coaches. Keep experience. And... That learn, 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 and then just keep progressing up the ranks. Yeah. You know? My dream is to one day work for England. Yeah. That is the ultimate aim for me. Yeah. Either as an England goalkeeper coach or England manager. That's... Really, goal. yeah, yeah. You, you find that that's the target. Hundred percent. So it's now just you know, it, that's implementing all the little bits, every single little bit of knowledge you get, just banking it, writing it down. You know, going over it over and over again. Yeah. Just become the best coach I can be. Basically. Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of coaching badges, where are you? I need to get my UA for B. Yeah, but it's been a nightmare to get yeah. onto just because obviously COVID and then yeah, it's yeah. Just, I tried to sign up backlog. for my B this year, but due to holidays and the end of the season, I can't even get on it this year. It so. It's a waiting game. <laughs> I've yeah, been waiting for two, three years now for yeah. it. So it's just fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It's a lot of sometimes. Keep, no, exactly. You have to just keep doing what mm. you're doing. And obviously, like I said, like you, you develop anyway without badges coaching. Mm, the more experience that you've got, the more hours that you're putting in on a training mm. field, you'll realize right and wrong yourself. Yeah. The more analysis that you can do, 100%. even watching other people's sessions and other people's mm. games all the time, you're, you're learning, aren't you? 100%. Like, it, it, doesn't matter what if you're watching a Premier League game or if you're watching the local game down the park, you'll see things in the game that mm. you could go, oh, I could change that. Yeah. I, I in a weird roundabout way, I think it's kind of a good thing because if I'd done my UEFA B two years ago, I probably would have been wrecking it. I'm lucky enough to work with, you know, A licensed coaches, pro yes. licensed coaches who've told me after working with me for a while, you'll breathe through B. And I'm like, oh, okay, that makes me you feel more confident. Yeah. And I feel like I'm going to go in there and actually yeah, not yeah. be so stressed, but learn more and actually develop better as well. But also when they ask to see your working hours, mm. you'll go, oh, I've done this, I did this, mm. this week I've got this session on. Mm. And you want to like, come to this session yeah, or this exactly, one or this yeah. one or this one? Yeah. And you, you, instead of going, oh, I haven't actually taken a session yet, because mm. you get a lot of players get to my age and they've yeah. never taken a training session. Or you get like ex players that go, oh, I haven't actually taken a session. I've mm. just been involved in them. I should yeah. be able to. I should be all right. It's but completely different it's thing. It's completely different thing when you're actually asked to, where's your bibs? Where's your cones? Yeah. It's like the, the fundamental things. What if something like, goes wrong? All of a sudden, you thought you had three goals. How to you adapt got two. it? Yeah. You, on the fly, you have to adapt it. Keep the same reason why you're there, the same like session plan, but yeah. adapt it. To adapt the, it. Yeah. For the number of servers that you've mm. got, or even. It, Somebody goes half down the, injured, yeah. Half the time, it's the goal availability. You've yeah. got to wheel a goal halfway across the pitch to make sure it's ready for the fiver mm. sides. And that's where a lot of goalkeeping co coaches and goalies get frustrated because often there's two goals, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And you're using one of them and it's not in the right place for where they need it for fiver yep. sides or set piece, whatever it might be. And you're the ones that are five minutes into your session moving a goal mm. about, setting up cones. and I, I, it's, it's definitely getting better, but... We're biased, obviously. I still think some of the disrespect towards goalkeepers and just that if a coach wants it set up before, let them do it. Yeah. We're such a specialised position. Like, if a right back has to play right wing, they can do it. We've seen it when outfielders go in goal. Yeah, it's, yeah. Unless you're Kyle Walker, it's, it's a horror yeah, show. Yeah, it's a calamity. <laughs> I've got one pet peeve that I hate and it's a dog whistle. Oh. <laughs> you know when goalkeepers are training down the other end of the pitch oh. and we get that wolf whistle yeah, and on. like come on hurry up hurry. and you're like I'm not a dog yeah. like, I have a name I'm a person <laughs> like just tell me yeah. that's my biggest pet peeve <laughs> right finally Sam uh, what does the goalkeepers union mean to you I think I love this question by the way goalkeepers union to me is just I think it's kind of like a brotherhood like obviously there's women goalkeepers as well don't get me wrong but it's Nobody knows what, let's say you let in a soft goal, every other goalkeeper can empathize with it. Yeah. And 
you very very rarely there are wrongings in goalkeeping there is unfortunately like there isn't anything but most of the time even if you've had a game it's been a tough game you've been at each other's throats afterwards you've let a soft one in they're like unlucky oh, mate you know oh, you're better than that blah, 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 that kind of stuff and it's just no matter what you can help build each other up yeah and it's just a special bond especially you know as well you have three keepers and a coach you get ridiculously close you're close with the rest of the team but you you three have like this weird like yeah. humor that yeah, yeah. the other people just don't understand the inside nah. jokes yeah yeah <laughs> there's, there's so many bits and components to being in the goalkeepers mm. union but it's just that like understanding mm. i find it's just you know what the other goal is going through yeah. good or bad you know what the coach is going through and mm. it's the way that you can all just relate to each other mm. you spend so much extra, extra time together as well yeah like all the other outfielders work with everybody that unit yeah sees each other way too often yeah, <laughs> not so too different. often but you know what i mean no, no, I see, yeah. see him more than my missus so. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a problem <laughs> <laughs> right uh mate this has been a really interesting fun episode thank you sam no thank you so much for having me on and everything it's been no, amazing it's been amazing right this has been the yours mine away podcast with me mark howard please make sure you do like comment and subscribe thanks a lot guys sam brown everyone <laughs> top man mate that was Cheers. really good no i appreciate it thank you honestly that's amazing really good. <laughs> What a save from Mark Howard.